finding myself in uh, situations <clears throat> that can be a little bit hard a lot of times, trying to guide people and to find themselves, to find the real happiness, to find the advice, to find the wisdom that I found in my journey on serving Hashem. Now, I know for sure that my advice works, because it worked. So if my advice worked for me, it's not because that I'm special, it's because that it's the truth, because I was not looking for advice for myself. I was asking Hashem Barach what to do, the Creator, what to do, and then I found an advice, and that solution worked. So it works. And also that it's all of those advice, you can find their sources in the holy books, in the Gemara Kedusha, in the, all the Talmud, in the Mishnayot, in the Midrashim, in the Zohar Kadosh, in the verses in the stories of the righteous people, or in the stories of our ancestors, in the Bible, it's uh, not making up those advice. Those advice, I'm bringing them out from those holy books, and then when I use them, practice them into my life, so it, it works. So I give those advice to other people. Now, what's the problem? That many of the people, they're not going all the way with that advice, they're just making two steps into that path and then they're giving up and they're saying, oh, it didn't work. And it's only because that they stopped, only because that they chose sadness on happiness, they chose despair on hope, they chose their own, own um, like bitterness and, 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 and sadness and, and like all, all the sorrow that they, they used to, to carry and, and, and not to work on themselves all the way until they will break their own nature and, and, and will pass that barrier and, and, and will uncover the light of the Creator that is hidden in those places. And like, you have a wall, you need to break that wall. Now a person is hitting twice boom, boom, and that's it, and now he's saying, oh, I tried, and he can bang the wall for a year. If that wall is so thick that after a year you haven't break it completely, you need to continue. I didn't say that that advice worked after one hour or after six hours. I never promised to no one salvation after six hours in Buddha Dut. I never ever in my life promised to someone, if you'll do six hours, you'll see miracles. I never said that thing. I think. And if I did, I was wrong. And I'm apologizing. Myself, I never thought that one time six hours will save me, even though that I saw many miracles after six hours, and even after one minute of prayer. But when you go and ask from someone, it's not in your hands to bring the salvation, it's in His hands. So when you go to Hashem and you ask from Hashem, please Hashem, give me the right advice, give me the salvation that I need. It depends on Him when the salvation will come. But it's written that for sure you will be answered if you pray long prayer. So what is long, it depends on how strong and stubborn you will be and how fast Hashem will decide to answer you. But for sure that He will answer if you're not going to give up. That's the only thing that I'm teaching. But you need to be as crazy as I to go all the way, not to be afraid. And if you are afraid, to, to scream to Hashem and not to get scared from the fact that you're afraid. Okay, so I'm afraid. Okay, so I'm going to scream to Hashem. Okay, so I have a problem. Okay, so I'm going to try to solve that problem. Oh, but now I got that issue as well. Okay, so I'm going to see what to do with that. Okay, so now I'm spread on 10 different issues. Okay, so it means that you have the abilities or else Hashem wouldn't put you in that position. But if you will understand what Hashem is doing with you, you will never give up. Because the things that we're achieving while serving Him, while connecting ourselves to Him, are amazing. I know about myself that I achieve things that people in years they won't achieve. And not because I'm special, only because that I went all the way. <coughs> because I was so strong. I'll give you an example. Today I saw, I spoke, I spoke with the Bialy Rebbe from Jerusalem, 
and I spoke with him about the, the, the hurricanes and about many other things that, that took place in, in, in the last few weeks. And he told me a few things about myself, and I, I asked him, what about my prayers? Because I know what happened with me during all of those days of the hurricanes and all the sorrow that my friends and people in Texas suffered, and then that other threat that was on, on, on Florida and, and, and all of that area. And, and I was with them. I felt their sorrow, and I was praying for them, and I was caring, and I, and I felt their sorrow and their fear. And my wife, in one of the evenings, she came to the room, and she saw me sitting on the bed and crying. And she said, what happened? And she knows that I lost my mind a few years ago already, but she said, what happened? So I told her, I'm, I'm, I, I feel the sorrow of every old woman that sits in her house and she's crying and she's afraid of what's going to happen with me. And she thinks I'm going to drown and I'm going to die and I'm going to make it. And, and I feel that sorrow. And, and I'm sitting alone in my room and I'm crying for people for, for not to die and not to suffer and, not to, 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 and really not to be hit by, by all of those threats that, that Hashem is putting. And I have a problem with Hashem. And I'm fighting with him, and I'm arguing with him. So I know what I went through on my own in my prayers, if it's in my Buddha Duyot, and if it's when I'm checking what's going on in the news, and if it's when I'm texting my friends and receiving texts back from friends in Florida, in Texas, wherever, and being in touch with them as much as we can. And I know exactly what I'm going through in my prayers, and if I'm in the mikveh, and if I'm standing Shmona Esre, and I know what I went through with my prayers, and I saw also the miracles that took place, and I saw also the wonders that Hashem Barach did, and how the wind changed his way, and the strength of that hurricane was lower than people asked him. And I saw myself in this situation, I remember my prayers, and I saw some salvation, so now I asked the Bialy Rebbe about my connection to this situation. And he's answering to me, why is it so hard for you to believe in yourself when you see that Hashem loves you so much, that you have so much help from heaven. And I'm telling you now, okay, so me now, Dror Moshe Kasuto, Dror Moshe Ben Emanuela, Dror Moshe Ben Abraham, me, myself, who that I am, I saw miracles, great. I saw the supervision of the Creator revealing His mercy, changing His judgments, based and corresponding to my prayers. I saw myself praying, like I told you, in my prayers, in the mikveh, I was praying, I did my job, and I saw wonders, and I can blame myself on those wonders, I don't have a problem, I saw that my prayers achieved something, but really, when I'm being realistic, I know that millions of people were praying. Not only Hasid Breslev, and not only my students, and not only the Jewish communities, every person with a mouth prayed. Everyone that could pray, prayed. Everyone was hoping for salvation. So how can I really take the salvation on my back? I must say that you for sure prayed also. You also prayed. He also prayed. Everyone prayed, right? So if everyone prayed, so how can it be that it will be only my prayer that had been answered? No, it wasn't only mine. So it was all of our prayers. Who cares? Can I count on your prayers in my judgment day? When I'm in stress, can I count on your prayers? No. I have only my mouth. I have only my heart. I have only my own way and path with Hashem. So, when God is supervising on me for my end, for my side, I need to see the 100% supervision of the Creator only on me. And when He's answering my prayers, I should also take my prayers seriously like I was the only one that was praying. And not because that realistically I was the only one that was praying. No, everyone was praying. And if there is a person that his name is Adam and he lives in Miami and he was praying also, he also need to take his miracles, the miracles that he saw, as a clear message that Hashem answered his prayers. And if there is a person that his name is Michael, and if there is a woman that her name is Elisheva, and if there is another person that his name is I don't know who, and he's praying, and she's praying, and when they are praying, their prayers are being answered, they need to understand that Rabbi Akiva said that every person should look 
at the world like it's been all created just for him. כל אדם חייב לומר, כל העולם כולו לא נברא אלא בשבילי. The world been created just for me, just for me alone. That I will do what? Only good. In this world, only good. Only good. All the way, only good. And if Hashem answered my prayers, He answered my prayers. I don't know what you are praying and if your prayers been answered. But if I saw in a certain way that Hashem in His amazing supervision answer to my prayer and I saw it, I saw the changes, I saw the hours, I saw that I was afraid, I saw that there were judgments, I saw that something critical, horrible, horrific can happen, and then I went and I cried to Hashem, and suddenly someone texted me, oh, you know, it won't be so bad as their thing, ah, okay, there is a message in it. So I need to take that message as a private message to myself, and not to put the hope for the redemption and the salvation based on the prayers of Am Israel and the Jewish communities and the synagogues and people that were fasting and whatever. No, I have only myself. I have him and I have me. That's what I have. And that's what I'm teaching. And when I'm teaching you guys to follow that advice and to go with that wisdom and to go with that truth, so my intention is that you will go all the way like you are the only person in the world not to be selfish, to understand that everything is on your back. And Hashem, He will find a way how to build that puzzle that your picture will fit to mine and ours will fit to hers and ours now will fit to theirs and it will keep on growing and keep on being perfect. A plant can be only a plant. An animal can be only an animal. But in nature, they find a, 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 a common language. They're communicating. They're flowing together. Even though that this animal is an individual, he's got only one thing in his mind, and he's going and doing his job. And that flower got only one intention, and he needs to grow, and he needs to bring down his roots, and he needs to catch some sun and some water. And everyone with his desire for life needs to continue, and Hashem makes them fit. Hashem will bring them both to the purpose of their life to become one, to be united in harmony, with it, in unity, and to complete the nature. But you need to be who that you are. You need to set up your mind to be an individual that is serving Hashem in Barach and doesn't look to the sides. As long as you're looking to the sides, who is here and who is there and who is also and what are they doing in Avodat Hashem? in the synagogue, how they're praying, and in shul, and in Beit Midrash, and what he is learning, and what they're learning, you're wasting your time. Instead of putting your mind into the book and learning, you're thinking what other people are learning. Instead of doing your hit bodedut, you're talking, and chatting, and learning how to do hit bodedut, and how is he, and what Rabbeinu is saying on it, and what that rabbi, and also that rabbi. Go to the field. Like I was explaining a few years ago, on, in a class that was talking, maybe last year, on the month of Elul, I gave a class on the month of Elul, and I explained in that class the, the quality, the power of charity, the greatness of charity, and I said, listen, the Torah is explaining that charity is a huge thing, that when you give charity, you, you, gates of heaven being open for you, and you're going to see wonders, and you'll have miracles, and amazing things will happen to you, and charity saves from death, and gives life, what well, amazing things, great, wonderful. Bottom line, charity is to open your wallet, to take out cash, and to give it to someone, that's charity. Charity is not the aspects of charity. Charity is not the greatness of charity. Charity is not what it's written on charity. Charity is to take out money from your pocket, like that, and to hand it to someone here. That's charity. That's charity. Other things are not charity. Check the camera, it will be your charity. <laughs> That's charity. Charity is to take out money from your pocket and to give it to someone else. That's charity. Charity is really to give someone else money. That's charity. And the greatness of the results of your action of giving charity, really giving, not learning about it, not talking about it for hours. No! 
take your hand and force it into your pocket, deep into those deep pockets where you hide your money, and from that, the, 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 the people, the, the faces, there is a joke in, on, in, we're telling it in Hebrew, that there are people that when they take out the money, so the faces that are illustrated on the bills are blinking because they haven't seen the sun so many years. So uh, the, the bills must blink. They must like, okay, you must take out the money out of your pocket and to give it to someone. Or else it's not charity, you're just talking. So also about it, but the dude, prayers, counting on Hashem, believing on Hashem. I'm talking and I'm guiding and I'm explaining to people, you need to go all the way. And people are making two steps or five steps or seven steps and then they're backing off. And then they will say, no, but I'm not as strong, Rabbi, draw, Rabbi, draw, Rabbi. It's nonsense. It's too, oh, who am I? Who do you think I am? I'm a person that started from zero, not from zero, with horrible debts. I'm a Baal Shuba. I started my life from zero. I started my life when I was 20 years old. Then I started learning how to put fill in. I had to remove my three tattoos, huge, big tattoos with laser. I was doing a lot of Shuba. I was crying to Hashem a lot for hours and hours. For years I was crying. Huge righteous people testifying to me that I spent thousands of hours in the fields because I did. It's not a secret. I spent thousands of hours in Hidbodadut in my life. And righteous people with divine spirit, like, like Rav Adr David Heimstein from Bnei Brak, he knows my prayers, and he saw with his divine spirit what that I was doing with my prayers. So he can tell me what was the effect of my prayers that I achieved. His words, a student of the Chazanish, not me. I am telling you that I went with no hope and with, with, with despair and with stress and with fear and with a, a, enormous amounts of, 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 of weakness and, and, and confusions to the fields and I was just crying to Hashem and calling Hashem and asking for salvation and Hashem answered me and things took time. And I went again, and another six hours, and another six hours, and I can tell you stories on how Hashem Dvach helped me and saved me. I wanted to buy a house. My wife was stubborn. She said, we must buy a house. I didn't have money. I decided that I will pray for it, because I don't know how you buy a house. I don't even know how you buy a house. Not that I don't know how to pay. I didn't even know how to do that. So I went and started doing six hours every day, every day, another six and another six. And not that I was not working, and not that I was not learning, and not that I was ignoring my wife and my children. On top of everything that I was doing daily, I made another six hours in Bodhidut. And you can ask yourself how you did it. I did it my way. I did it slowly. I did it when I was tired. I, was the, the, I did it in the, my neighborhood, I did it in my porch, I did it behind the house. One time I went, I thought I will do six hours, I came back after three, I continued in my house, in my living room, I drank another coffee and another coffee, and I, I did it in the way that I was able to. But I never stopped until we bought the house, and we did, we bought the house. And somehow the bank approved our mortgage. No one can explain it. But they did, and we bought that house. And one time, inside those days that I was doing another six hours prayers on that, on that house, I felt like I can do more. And I did 11 hours in that day. Because in that day I could go out early, and I went in the, after, in the after, in early afternoon, and I went, and I came back after 11 hours. And I was texting my wife, and I was asking her if she's okay, and whatever, and I did my prayers, I did my part, because if you want the salvation, you don't need to call me, you need to call Hashem. And how you call Hashem? You don't need to be a righteous man for that, you just need to open and use your mouth. Hashem, I need a house, you don't have words, what do you need? A house? Okay, just now I taught you. Hashem, I need a house. 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 Hashem, you don't need to say more. If that's the only thing you need, just say that. 
You want to say something else? Say, Hashem, I want a big house. Hashem, I want the front lawn and a backyard and we need a swimming pool, Hashem. And I want two floors and seven bedrooms and a huge m- 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 house for, for, for guest house. No problem. If that's what you want, if that's what you need, go for it. But go for it. But go. If you won't go, no one will go for you. You want to make aliyah, you want to make money, you want to be rich, you want to cover your debt, you want to be healthy, you want your wife to be healthy, you want to open a school. I don't know what you want to do. Do it. How are you going to, I don't know. Pray. But pray all the way until you will be answered. And if you're going to stop in the middle, oh, I'm praying for that thing for seven years. I have things that I'm praying for them for 16 years. So what? You don't want to be answered, so why are you stopping? Moshe Rabbeinu, when he wanted to get into Eretz Israel, to the Holy Land, he was ready to pray and to pray, and the Gemara is testifying on him, and the Chumash is testifying on him, that he was throwing prayers, shooting prayers to, to the sky, until he covered every point in the sky. There is no one point in the sky that Moshe Rabbeinu was not shooting prayers to it. He was praying for thousands on thousands of hours. That's the only way you can aim your prayer to every dot in the sky. Hashem, 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 Hashem. Hours, days, weeks, months, years, 40 years in the desert, what, in the desert of Sinai. What was he doing? He wasn't smoking grass. He was doing prayers. He was praying to Hashem. He was calling to Hashem from the depths. From the darkness of his life, from the sorrow of his nation, from the broken hearts of his people, he saw the children, and he saw the widows, and he saw the poor people, and he saw the frustration, and he saw the poverty, and he saw the pain, and the sorrow, and, 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 he, and he cared. So what was he doing with all of that sorrow? He went and he was fighting with Hashem. So if you want a salvation, so you need to bring it. And I'm waking you up all of the time to do what I'm doing, not because I need you by my side, because you need to be by your own side. That's what I'm trying to teach you all of the time. You want to fight, you want to win, so fight and you will win. People are calling me, they have domestic strong bite problems. People are suffering from abusing husbands, from horrible situations that they're going through. Fight! What do you want from me, that I'll fight for you? You're calling me that I will fight with your husband? No way! You want to fight with him? He's bothering you, he's making you upset, he's making you crazy? Kill him, fight with him, make peace with him, whatever you want, what do you want from me? You want to solve the problem? Go talk to him. You want to take him to court? Take him to court. For me, the only thing that you will receive will be, will be that strength to go and to believe in yourself and to go all the way with what that you think that is right. And if you want to fight, so fight. If you're stupid and you want to fight, go and fight. If you want to win because you're right and he's wrong, go fight with him. No one will give you an advice that will heal you except of the advice, advice that will send you to find your true self. I cannot give you an advice that will give you a solution. That's a lie. The only solution is that you will find the truth and follow that and go with that all the way against no matter who, how strong he is, how powerful he is. Go fight. If that's the truth, go fight. If you're just being stubborn and you're going to find, fight, you're going to find yourself facing the wall. Hashem will fight with you. Hashem will protect the weak even if a righteous man will chase after the, the evil. Even if that evil person is weak and now he's being chased by a, a big righteous man, Hashem will protect that evil poor guy. Why? Because Hashem will ask to help the poor. So if you're a poor person, go and fight. Hashem will protect you. Hashem will help you. But if you're cruel and you're vicious and you're trying to abuse other people and to take control on other people with force, so be aware. Hashem will fight with you. Hashem will destroy you. Hashem will not going to give you one day to be happy and to smile. Even if you think that you're happy now. It's written, 
the one that is laughing is really the one that will laugh in the end, not the one that is laughing today. He can be so happy and think to himself that he won and actually he lost. He doesn't know what he lost already. He doesn't know the decrees that Hashem Ibarach is decreeing on him. He doesn't know what Hashem is planning behind his back, what Hashem is doing with his bank account, what Hashem is doing with his wife, what Hashem is doing with his children. He doesn't know. His child can be on the internet all the internet all day long and he doesn't have a clue about it. His wife can chat with another man. He doesn't know. And he thinks that he's a hero. He doesn't know. People already took all of his money and he doesn't know people already took over his business and he's not aware. And he will play the macho and the powerful strong and I don't know what. Great, you can think. You have your thoughts and Hashem, Hashem is laughing. Hashem, he looks from the, from the side. Yeah, my kids, they're playing. Playing in enemies, playing in wars, playing in plans, planning things. Hashem is laughing. There is the godly plan and that's the only plan. And the world is going toward a complete redemption. And if you're going to be a good person and a positive person, a kind person, a nice person, a supportive person, a generous person, you will be redeemed. If you're going to be silly and stupid and stubborn, you're going to face the wall. You're going to be crushed by the wall. That's it. The end of the story. Now, only one thing, not who is stronger. Hashem is your enemy, not me. You think you can fight me? You're fighting Hashem. You think you can fight King David? You think you can fight Moshe Rabbeinu? You think you can fight Avraham Avinu? And now all of those stupid will say, oh, he's comparing himself to King David, to Avraham Avinu, to Moshe Rabbeinu. Of course, I'm with them. What's the difference between us? Aren't they my ancestors? What are you talking about? You don't understand who you are. That's your problem. But I understand exactly in which side I'm standing. Maybe I'm from the, sea, from the seed of King David and you don't know that. Maybe I'm from the seed of Abraham Avinu and you don't know that. What's the problem? Why not? Maybe my family is from the kingship of King David and you don't know that. Do you know that? You don't know that. I know about myself. You don't know about myself. And also you don't know about yourself. You think that you know, but you don't really know. Do you really know? Do you show that you know? You don't know. You think that you know. The truth is that you don't know. You don't know anything. You don't know anything. In the holy books it's written on converts, for an example, that they have a Jewish soul. So now that person came out to the world from a Christian mother, from a Muslim mother, from a I don't know what mother, and he got a Jewish soul. And he is a non-Jew, but he's Jewish. His soul is Jewish. But he must convert in the orthodox way, in the right way, with all of the, the, the chumrot, whatever. He needs to convert. But why? Only because he needs to go through a certain process to be recognized in the world that he is convert. And because that the Jewish nation are not able to know if his intentions are pure or not, so this is why there are certain rules of rejection and we must pile some kind of difficulties that not all of the rabbis understand exactly what they need to do and what they're not supposed to do. But anyway, the halakha, the Jewish rule, is setting certain kinds of difficulties that we must pile on a convert, on a person that wants to convert, because we need to test the amount of, of, of truth, of his real will, his intentions, how really strong he is with his intentions to come and to join the holy nation. And if he really will have that holy soul, and he will never gonna back off, he will be converted in the end, and he will become Jewish. So, you came to the world from a Christian family, you don't know anything about yourself, you think that you're a Christian, you think that you're a non-Jew, but the holy books, the books of the Ariya Kadosh, are explaining that you're actually a Jewish person. You have a Jewish soul. So what do you know about yourself? Where you got that soul from? You know that King David was supposed to die in a very... He didn't have life. He couldn't live at all. And Adam Arishon, the first man, gave him 70 years from his soul. 
So that's why Adam Arishon, the first man, lived 930 years. That was the time that he lived, instead of 1,000 years that he was supposed to live. Because he gave 70 years, 70 years from his life to King David. Because he wanted King David to come out to the world. So he gave 70 years of his life to King David. Great. Now, who is King David? I'm asking you. Is he King David or the first man, Adam Arishon? He holds the soul of Adam Arishon. And people were fighting about him, that he is a convert, that he's not Jewish, that he's the son of Ruta Moaviyah, that Ruta Moaviyah, she was a convert, and maybe the conversion was not right because we're supposed to receive converts from the nation of Moab, or we're not supposed to receive conver converts from the nation of Moab. And then in the end, the, the Allah Psak was to accept from the women of the Moabim, but not from the men of the nation that calls Moab. Great, that was the Psak. But for years, on years, on years, the rabbis of that generation, the wise people, were arguing on that sugiah, on that situation, if he is Jewish or not. And you're talking about the soul of Adam Rishon, you're talking about King David, Mashiach Hashem, the Mashiach, the eternal Mashiach of the world. And people are fighting about him if he's Jewish or not. Great, amazing, no problem. No problem. No problem. People can fight and Hashem, Hashem, the Creator, He sits and laughing. He's laughing. With who? With King David. He's laughing with the first man, with Adam Rishon, with Abraham Avinu, with all of the righteous ones. And they're laughing. Why? Because they know the path. They know the truth. And all of the ignorant people, the selfish ones, with the lust and desires, the ones, the blind ones that cannot see the truth, because they're not seeking for the truth, are arguing and fighting and contradicting and arguing and cursing and blaming and talking Lashonara and making wars in the world. And they think that they can prevent Mashiach from coming. Do you think that you have the power to prevent Mashiach from coming? No, I'm not trying. Do you know who you are? Do you know who I am? Do you know who we are? Do you know what's the godly plan? Do you know what Hashem is doing? You don't know, so sit and be quiet. Ask Hashem in Barach, who am I? Who am I, Hashem? Before you say your opinion, before you have an opinion, before you express yourself, check where am I talking from? Am I talking from my knowledge, from my wisdom, from my life experience, from what that I've been taught by the righteous ones? from the holy knowledge that I received from, from my ancestors, by the holy tradition. Where are you talking? Maybe you're talking from your fears. Maybe you're talking from your frustration, from your sadness, from your own depression. Maybe you're talking from, from your, your, your awful, dark, foreign thoughts that you have. Maybe you're not holding the desire to serve at all, and you just want to win, and you just want honor. So. Shut your mouth. It's much better. It's much better that you will shut your mouth and, and, and just be quiet. Than talking nonsense and talking and talking. People are talking. People are talking. You know what they're doing while they're talking? They're digging their own graves. That's what they're doing. That's what they're doing. The Nakash, the snake, that his mouth was the mouth of Lashonara. He's got two tongues, right? right? Why? Because he was talking to, for two sides. That's the symbol. And the snake, Hashem put his mouth to eat the ground, to eat earth, to bury himself in the ground all of his life. You're talking the Shonara, you're eating earth. You're digging your own grave. Where the snakes are li living their lives? In graves, under, underground, in tunnels, in caves. They're buried. All of their lives they need to, to, to hide and, 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 and they hate everyone and they're vicious and they're cruel and they bite. Okay, great. You want to be a snake? Go be a snake. You can be my snake pet. I don't mind. I'll feed you. Give you mice once a week. No problem. Put you in a tank. Yeah, no problem. It's crazy people. Don't understand the potential of life. How much you can achieve if you're just going to connect yourself with honesty, going to aim your heart to the real purpose of our life, of our creation, to serve with honor, to love, to care, to be generous, to support, 
to make wonders in the world. In the end, Hashem will tell every person exactly what he deserves, what he's about to receive, if it's a reward, if it's chaser shalom, punishment. How are you going to deal with punishment? Are you able to deal with punishment? Your wife is telling you that you're stupid, you don't know how to deal with that. So when Hashem will tell you that you're stupid, what are you going to do then? What are you going to do in Judgment Day when Hashem will rebuke you? What are you going to do? What a person going to do after all of his nonsense, blaming other people? How stupid a person can be to curse and to think that he knows something about life. You want to be strong, you want to be someone, go, do it, be who that you are, fight for, the, for, for, right, for, for justice, for the truth, protect the weak, support the poor, do good things in your world, in your life. Spend your time in a quality way, in an amazing way, in an inspiring way. Help your children, help your family, help your neighbors, help your friends, help yourself, help Hashem. Pray on these people, pray on the truth seekers. Go do something useful with your life instead of praising yourself and, 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 and trying to, to, to... You're feeding yourself with crumbs from, from the sewer, from the garbage thinking to yourself that you're something special. Oh, I'm learning, oh, I'm doing this. Why are you praising yourself on the page of Marat that you learned that for sure you didn't understand it at all, that for sure you came out with the wrong conclusions, that you don't have the drop of common sense to understand what really the Talmud is telling you, that really you don't see at all what Hashem is hitting you with the verses, what it's all about. It's all about mercy. It's all about to be a normal, decent person, to love your wife, to love your friends, to have patience. You don't have patience. You can hit someone. You can curse someone. You don't have a heart. You're making other people miserable. You're cursing. Who are you? Hashem is saying to the evil person, who are you to tell my laws, to teach my Torah? Who are you? Going and, no, I'm telling you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. Sit and be quiet. Don't do anything. It's so much better. Go, drown yourself in the mikveh. Purify yourself. Go, put your mind. Cry to Hashem. Ask for forgiveness. Days of Elul, you want to do tshuva. Go, really do tshuva. Say to Hashem, fix me. Come on, fix me. Take me seriously. I want to be fixed. Go all the way with your pure intention. Say to Hashem, Hashem, come on. Cut with the nonsense. Look at me. I'm burning my life, I'm wasting my time. I'm talking Lashon around people, I'm doing Shtuyot, I'm wasting my hours, my precious time. There is no worse loss than the loss of time. How many years I lost already, how many days, how many nights. Not from learning, not from davening, from being with you, from spending my life with you, Hashem. I could be so close to you until today. I can be so close to you today, Hashem. What am I doing all day long, thinking in a negative way, afraid from people, what will happen about my job and my boss and my colleagues and my partner? What? What? What are you talking about? Hashem already set for you the income from one year to the next. Hashem knows exactly how we're going to feed you, with which kind of food. You saw once in your life, you saw a zebra that is worried what will be with the food. A lion that was worried what will happen with his food. He's hungry, he goes to hunt. You're hungry, go and hunt. You need to food to find food, go and work. You need to make money, go and do something for money. You don't have money, go pray, go work, go do something. Be useful, be productive. You need money, great, no problem. Open a kindergarten, go learn a profession, clean houses, go be a doctor, whatever. Whatever you decide to do, go do. Call your mother. No problem. Do whatever you want to do. But do. Be honest. No, Hashem is not giving me. What are you sitting and whining? Sitting and complaining? Instead of taking yourself seriously and go to work. You want to work on your spiritual side? Go work on your attributes. Go be a nicer person. More kind. With more patience. With more love. Caring. Smile to people. Hug people, love people, care about people. Give them your time. You want to work physically? Go work, find a job. Go work in CVS. Go work. 
go work in Walmart, go, are you afraid? Why are you afraid? You need money, right? You need to pay rent, go, clean the streets. There is no job that embarrasses the person that works in that job. Everything you will do, if you will do it with honesty, you can be proud of yourself. If you're bringing money to feed your children, to feed your wife, to feed your, feed your family, if you're a woman and, and you, you're working for your living, you bring money, you need to be embarrassed that you're not a doctor, that you're not a lawyer. You're cleaning streets, so what? So what? You're cleaning floors, so what? You're babysitting, so what? You're not babysitting, you're feeding your own children. At least you're not stealing. At least you're not cheating. At least you're not lying. You're being honest and proud of yourself that you're feeding your children with pride, with honesty. It's amazing. It's the best thing in the world. Righteous people were so proud of themselves that they were working all of their lives and never asked for charity. So you're working and now you're embarrassed. It's a trick of the evil inclination of Yitzhak fooling you. You're doing amazing. Working for your living, supporting, paying your, bill, paying your bills, paying your rent. Is there something bigger than that? Than to, 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 that your children will have a roof and a bed and, and, and clean sheets to sleep on? Something better than that, that you can feed them, that you can bring food for the house for Shabbos? Something better than that, that they have clean, clean clothes, that they can go to school, that they can go whatever to play? that they have sandals for the summer, that they have boots for the winter, something greater than that. What? What do you want to do? To be an angel? You are an angel. If you're doing that, you're an angel. You are an angel. You're amazing. Your wife will call you an angel. Your children will testify that you were their angel. What do you want? You want to have wings? The Midrash is saying that the holy people that were sacrificing themselves, not dying, like just giving their life to Hashem, they, in, in, in the redemption day, they will receive wings. That's what the Midrash is saying. They will have the ability to fly. I know, you don't believe it, because you never saw Tinkerbell. You never saw Peter Pan. There's a song. I believe I can fly. You don't believe we can fly. Why are you holding? The holy ark was carrying the people, the Levites that were holding it. King David was saying names and he was flying in the air. Holy people can fly. Yoshua ben Pilchia, the Tana, he was flying in the air. People can fly. You don't believe that you can fly. It's your problem. You don't believe that you can fly because you don't believe that Hashem loves you enough that He can make you fly. But I believe that Hashem can make me fly. Because I saw that Hashem Yitbarach made wonders with me that were not connected to reality 100%. And what's the difference between that I will buy a house to the fact that Hashem can make me fly? It's the same. That's impossible. It was impossible. And I bought that house. It's mine. Until today it's mine. And it's impossible. And I'm still paying the mortgage. And it's impossible. I'm here with you and I'm paying the mortgage. It's impossible. You can't believe it. But I believe it because I'm experiencing it in my life. Because I saw that the wonders came after I was praying for them. So it's a clear evidence for me on a miracle. So if that was a miracle, what's the difference between one miracle to another? That Hashem can make me fly. I'm asking you now, you ever dreamt that you're flying in a dream? Great, in a dream you can fly, right? Now I'm asking you, when you were dreaming, when you were dreaming, were you a fa aware to the fact that you were dreaming or that for you, when you were there, it was reality in the dream? While you were dreaming, was it a dream for you in that dream or that it was reality? It was reality and you were flying, right? So maybe now you're dreaming, and over there it was your reality, and you can fly. You don't know what Hashem is doing. A person can spend 70 years in his dream, and he will live another 70 years, and he really gonna experience 70 years. 
When you wake up from a nightmare, you were about to be eaten by a shark. You were about to fall from the bridge. You were about to get hit by a truck, right? It was reality for you. That's why you woke up, right? But actually, you were all safe, in bed, only 12 minutes you were sleeping, nothing really took place, no were really, right? But for you, it was reality. If you were there, you would make an oath, you would swear that you want to go out from that situation, right? Because it was reality for you. So if over there you can fly, so why does Hashem won't make you able now to fly? What's the problem? It's Hashem. We're talking about Hashem, not about you and your abilities. You're nothing. You're a piece of clay. You're a piece of mud. You're a piece of earth. You're nothing. You're nothing. You are a clay in the hand of the Creator. And He can create you as He wish. And if He will want to make you fly, you will fly. <laughs> Big time. Big time. Because Hashem can do whatever He wants with you. It's not about you at all. It's about Hashem's greatness. The Creator's greatness. And in the redemption process, we will experience wonders and miracles that will be greater than the wonders that we experienced when we went out of Egypt. Bigger than open the sea for us. Bigger than feeding us for free in the desert for 40 years. That the outfits, the clothing of, of the children will grow on their bodies with the years. And that they won't have to wash them. They will stay clean and fresh. And everything was amazing. And the wonders that we will experience will be greater than those that Hashem was fighting with our enemies and thunders and angels came in the night and wiping them off, just removing them from our faces. And we didn't need to move a finger. The IDF, Tzahal. Nonsense. Shtuyot. Only Hashem is protecting us. I'm not saying not to fight. You're a soldier. It's in your soul. Great, we need soldiers. But you should also know as a soldier that without Hashem, you're done. You're dead. If Hashem won't protect you, you're dead. And as a soldier, if you're a real soldier, you know that. You know that only Hashem can save your life. Only Hashem can save your life. So the real wisdom is only to know who the wisdom really belongs to and who the fortune really belongs to and who the health really belongs to and who the kingship really belongs to and to follow your truth is to follow Hashem to connect yourself to your own truth and to go with it all the way it's really to connect yourself to your true creator to the roots of your soul to Father in Heaven and I bless all of my students and all of the people that listen to my advice to go all the way and never to back off, and never to give up on the mercy of Hashem, and to force Hashem to uncover His mercy, and to fight for the weak, to fight all the way. And after those holy days, we're going to see wonders. After Rosh Hashanah, after Yom Kippur, after Sukkot, we're all going to see wonders. We're all going to see wonders. That year that is about to come, will be one of the greatest we ever experienced in our lives. You will all going to say that it's true. All of you, each and every one of you, will testify that that year was beyond real. Promise. Stay in touch. Stay tuned, you say? Yeah? Stay tuned. To be continued. This world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all He, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.